about Park City Presents, your new nonprofit that you uh, have launched. Sure. Um, so they, they, it's sort of like a wing of Park City Music Hall. Um, we're kind of a pres- uh, like a, a production company is what Park City Presents is, and there's different things that we will present uh, with air quotes on radio. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's really there, so so we'll we'll definitely be continuing to put on shows at Park City Music Hall. More than likely, what we're going to try to do there is actually reduce prices by using community sponsorship uh, and you know corporate sponsorship, so we can actually bring prices down and s- in some cases make things free, especially community events, cultural events. You know, events that that bring diversity to Park City Music Hall uh, that otherwise are pretty hard for us to do without, uh, you know, giving budget to an advertising budget for these kinds of things. Um, So that's one. But the things that we're most excited about are the um, the music tech education uh, component. So so now you're talking about the areas Mm -hmm. of programming or support that Park City Presents would like to uh, help with. So one of them is now this music tech education. So right. could you explain what that is? Sure. So I think you're kind of if you if you if you so you've opened a music venue, the, the probably the most uh, logical choice if you're going to do some kind of nonprofit work is to teach music lessons potentially for free. I think that that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think a far more especially in Bridgeport where you have a lot of people that are uh, k- children that are likely not college track, right? To get them into a technical career that actually could bear fruit uh, financially for them. Uh, these are high-paying careers that can be on Broadway and, <clears throat> you know, moving to L.A. and working on touring acts, doing sound and lights for these kinds of uh, people. That that could be a very fruitful career. And I think they'd, that, that Bridgeport students that potentially aren't college track, even if they are college track, would really enjoy that that uh, th- these skill sets and, and learning about how to do you know, lights, how to do sound, how to do production. And all, all of that could be then – you know, complemented with maybe some community college education Absolutely. after, you know, and you could you could end up really in a good position, uh, you know, with somebody from this community learning those skills and you're close to the music scene. What are, what are some of the other uh, initiatives of Park City Presents? Sure. So, you know, kind of going back to my pride in Bridgeport thing, obviously, I think all of this uh, cultivates pride in Bridgeport and, and improves Bridgeport. But this one is more of a fun, as you said before, having fun in the moment. <laughs> This is our uh, probably the most fun thing we're going to be doing uh, is to actually put on large scale, not large, medium sized festival style things in the city parks, not seaside. This is not sound on sound. This is not an expensive ticket with huge names. This is more uh, definitely regionally touring acts would be the headliner. But ultimately, it's meant to be a community event with great local music, including a, you know, the final event might not be local, but it'll be you know, something that's relevant to the community that it's in in different parks in different sections of Bridgeport. So you're bringing like a really high quality uh, product to an underserved community in a you know park that needs awareness, and it's all free to the to the public. Well, that sounds compelling to me, and I'll tell you that is something Band Central would like to talk with you about regarding yeah. potentially partnering on cool. on that initiative we'll and making that, that sustainable. Um, <coughs> and are there any other initiatives that uh, that you have there? That kind of does it. We kind of call them the three times. There's the hey, uh, hey parks. Steve, Ben There's is here. Steve. Keep going. Sorry. <laughs> the park, music in the parks, <laughs> music at uh, Park City Music Hall, you know, continuing that, that, that component of it, and then the music tech education. Oh, that's great. And um, <laughs> we're talking to John Torres. Um, what, what do you have going on at Park City Music Hall coming up that listeners should know about? Yeah, we've got some great stuff. I mean, in, even this Tuesday, we have an amazing uh, night of music for Raise for the Rock, which is uh, basically a, a benefit for the uh, Black Rock Day. Um, after that, we've got uh, a very excited about uh, DJ Logic and Friends, which is featuring Neil Evans of Soul Live, Eddie Roberts from the New Master Sounds, and Ben Atkin of Goose. Wow. Uh, Going to be great. <laughs> He's doing two nights. That sold out last time, so we decided to try two nights. Um Natalie Rise, who's a reggae artist, she's coming on Thursday, June fifteenth. Tracy Joe's playing. We got a lot of great stuff coming up. Um, one other one that's just announced was Siren Songs to Save the Sound, which is uh, put on by uh, Grammy nominee Nicole Zoraitis, and she's bringing an all-star group of, of musicians for her own CD release. But also, she's got Siren Tip, Rosemary Winkler, and uh, then there's going to be a dance party at the end. That's on uh, Saturday, July eighth. So what you're hearing is a ro- robust menu of of things you can go see just by checking out the calendar at Park City Music Hall. And, you know, one of the things I admire is that you've also made the space available, um, you know, at a reasonable price for local nonprofits to to rent the space out for their events, John. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, 
Um, you know, joining us next um, after you and I play a little something live in the studio will be Amy Turner, and we're we're performing uh, an event together. Jono's in the band, and right. I'm in the band, and it's it's sort of. Uh, the band Central Funk and Disco team playing for Team Wolfgang. Yeah. But uh, why don't you just give us a little sense of, uh, before we uh, grab our instruments, where uh, listeners can find you on social media if they want to get in contact or the website, any Instagram sure, info. Sure, sure. So Park City Music Hall has Instagram and Facebook at just Park City Music Hall. Park City Presents is brand, you know, we just started it. There's probably one post. But that's Park City Presents, all one word for both of those. Um, and then, you know, I'm, I'm not really launched yet on my, my music side of things. The newest iteration of what John Torres is going to be doing has not. I don't have any of socials yet. But that's, uh, that's where you can find Park City Music Hall and Park City Presents. Great, great. All right, so uh, we're grabbing some guitars here live in studio. This is sort of not really Mike, and, uh, but we're going to lay it down. Good. Is Mr. Jaffe he here? Is, he is here. We are live streaming. Everything is uh, all right. Is show him here. these instruments. He, if he come when he comes okay. in and sits down, he can just grab one of those. Yeah. Just leave him there yeah. for now. Yeah. Uh, Ready? Great. Great. Yep. One, two, three. What's that sound? Everybody look what's growing down. There's bad lines being drawn. Nobody's right if everybody's wrong. Young people speaking their minds. Getting so Resistance from behind this time to stop. What's that sound? Everybody, look what's going down. What a field day for the heat. Thousand people in the street singing songs. sound everybody knows what is going down When you're always afraid, step out of line, man, come take you away. Stop, hey, what's that sound? Everybody, look what's going down. Stop, hey, what's that sound? Everybody, look what's going down. Stop, hey, what's that sound? Everybody, look what's going down. Stop, hey, what's that sound? Everybody, look what's going down. Thank you, John Torres. My pleasure. Nice. Thank you, Rob Freed. Yeah, joining us now is uh, Amy Turner. Hi. Amy, hi there. Amy Turner is the executive director at Team Wolfgang and Company. She is a, a people-centered person who is an adept at leading and finding ways that team members can tune into being their best selves. She has a background as a performer herself, as a Broadway dancer. John, she actually performed 
in 42nd Street on Broadway as a teenager. That's amazing. Just get a, get a load yeah, of that. I did not know that. Which she credits that whole experience with boosting her de- ability in independent thinking and agility in moving effortlessly between lead and supporting roles. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to let Amy describe Team Wolfgang, though I want to I want to provide an introductory comment about people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Okay. When you when you think about it, many of the important and famous people who have contributed a lot to humanity have overcome a disability. Mm-hmm. It's not what they contribute at, uh, as ideas and stuff, but it's how they transform others around them to a higher, more intelligent, and involved, evolved vibration. Examples might be Albert Einstein, Vincent van Gogh, Frederick Nietzsche, Ludwig van Be- Be- Beethoven from the past, or you know Dan Aykroyd, Michael Phelps, Greta Thunberg, Eminem, Steven Spielberg, and Michael Fox from the present. Mm-hmm. The list goes on and on. And through music with purpose, having fun, aligning with purpose, building a powerful network, we transform special needs into special abilities, Mm -hmm. which enriches our community. Yeah. I like it. (laughs) Well, that was my, that's our thing. So, Amy, tell us a little bit more about yourself and how did you evolve to today where you're sitting in this studio with me and John and, and Ben? Um, well, that would take another show. But <laughs> <laughs> um, n- you know, I think that um, the interesting thing about being a performer, especially at such a young age, and being um, independent and in the city, I moved to New York City as a teenager, um, y- you know, you, I observe a lot. I learned by observation. And what, one of the things I think I learned is that we're all on a different path. We're all different, and we're all following, even if we end up in the same place, every single person has gotten there from a different, you know, road or, or fork or whatever that is. And I think the other thing that I learned as a performer is um, everything you are is the most unique thing you can bring. And when we hmm. try and be something else or we try and fit in, quite frankly, you don't get the job, right? Because nobody is better at being you than you. So you have to figure out what that is that makes you special, what is that makes you hireable and unique and, and have the opportunity to tell the story differently than any other person on the planet. Wow, so, that's great. Yeah, I'm thanks. So then like that translates, I think now fast forward 30 years, and it translates into you know, seeing every individual as an individual. And the thing that One of the many things, but probably the most purposeful thing for me about Team Wolfgang is the fact that we look at each individual as an individual. So we have a very strict curriculum, but it's it's adapted for every single person. You know, we don't discriminate against a specific disability or we don't only support a specific disability. So we're constantly looking at that person as a unique human being with challenges and abilities. And I would say all four of us can probably say every person we run into has challenges <laughs> in how to assimilate or work through this construct of society that we've built. But we also have strengths and a uniqueness. So it's a little bit of the converting the special needs to a special abilities. Yeah. There's that transformation. And one of our team members says that. He's like, you know, <coughs> I have unique abilities. And it's really that simple. It's that simple for him. And you know, even thinking about your comment about Bridgeport, it's like, you know, <laughs> no one's all bad and no one's all good. And there, you can, if you go out of your comfort zone and you go somewhere new, it's amazing what you find. It's amazing. And so I think that's one of the things that sets us apart from other amazing organizations in this sort of field of, of helping um, individuals with all sorts of disabilities and special needs is is really focusing on, you know, how can we move that individual towards a little more purposeful life to a feeling of accomplishment and a greater sense of independence. Wow, we're we're listening to Amy Turner, Executive Director of Team Wolfgang and Company, and you are listening to Band Central Radio here on WPKN 89.5 FM in Bridgeport. Uh, What are the main priorities of Team Wolfgang right now? So right now we've done a huge, um, we're coming out of a strategic plan and a mission shift, and so we're really just implementing that. 
Um, we have a, a space in Bridgeport down in Black Rock or production site. And uh, we have actually since coming out of COVID moved from five shifts a week to 10. We have reconfigured the space and we're moving towards 15. So by the end of the year, we'll have, you know, it's not exactly tripled. Who's the math major in here? But <laughs> <laughs> gone from five to 10 to 15. And one, one sense, when we say a production site, are we talking about baking? Yeah, um, which is, yes, we are. So at the production site, so the whole and curriculum. And I, I don't mean, I don't mean <laughs> getting baked, guys. I mean, I mean actually baking doggy treats. Um, see, the, the Thank you for that clarification. <laughs> we all so needed the, it. You know, the interesting thing about many of these nonprofits that deal with intellectual and development yeah. disabilities is this side. They approach it different ways. So Friday night we performed for a nonprofit that approaches it through an equine horse experience yeah. that 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 sensitivity that um with nature yes and you're approaching it with this hands-on you learn baking you learn these skills you learn also to to, to conduct yourself in the retail operation yeah we and should probably just dial it back and make sure everybody knows because a lot of people do know the dog treats right they go oh we know the dog treats and some people don't even know that that's part of our curriculum but so the dog treats um, are the through line from the very beginning to the very end of both of our curriculum. So they um, hand make these artisan dog treats. They package them. They also make some other dog toys in, and um, as part of their developmental skill support. And then they package them and then they take them over to the retail store, which is in downtown Fairfield. And they sell them. So that includes, you know, all kinds of shopkeeping, merchandising. They balance the cash drawer. Um, they make outgoing phone calls to our wholesale account. So it's this whole, like, um, universal look at both job skills and life skills and ongoing learning, lifelong learning. There's always something more you can do. Um, but it, the through line is these dog treats. So, yeah, yeah where you know, people and see that. <laughs> just, just linking this up with something John Torrey said. He said guitar is in. <laughs> and slide yeah. guitar also dogs are totally in right totally now i mean totally in I, everybody i know is either dogs. has a dog or is thinking about a dog <laughs> yeah or is fighting a spouse who wants to get a dog <laughs> which and that's is sort how of it my all started my right <laughs> three moms had uh had many children among them i think they have you know like 11 children between the three of them but each one had a child with a very different special need and a very different disability, but they also all had dogs. So they were rolling around all kinds of ideas. What can we do to help add productiveness to our children's lives, especially as they age out of the, the social support of the school system? So that's the other thing a lot of people don't understand. Um, a lot of people, we either we did or our children have gone through public schools where there's a lot of assimilation and a lot of support. And then at 18, when they graduate, there's a transitional program that's also supported by the public school system from 18 to 22. Hmm. And then they call it the cliff. And then at 22, all of those services are stopped. What are you going to do with your life? Your friends have gone off to college. Maybe they're in relationships. They're getting jobs. You know, And here you are at 23 years old and nothing to do and no social construct. Your community has just left you. And your opportunity to find purpose has just collapsed underneath of you. So we that's really where we come in. It is for the adults. We, um, y you know, all the way up in their 40s, we have team members. But it's really to kind of just give a, a baseline, a community and a purpose, you know, when that support structure starts to, you know, leave underneath of you. Well, I, I certainly feel your passion. Um <clears throat> Uh, in a minute, I'm going to ask you to that we maybe talk about our June 1st event, because this is an event at Park City Music Hall mm -hmm. where people will have an opportunity to meet you, meet the, some of the team members yeah. and, and participate in an event about raising awareness and funds for Wolfgang. Anything else before we get to that that you wanted to add about the organization or about your vision? Um, you know, I think that... Uh, we call this our party with a purpose. So I'll kind of use this as a segue, right? Okay. So it's a party with a purpose. And we've been talking a lot about, so what is the purpose of the party? <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, that's the question. And the purpose of the party goes back to what you said in the very first segment of this, right? It's that it is a, it is a time and a space where we can all come together. We can just, it's a joyful event. It's so much fun. We incorporate music and laughter and education and community and all of that sort of comes out of this and and so what i've learned is that 
there's sort of this never ending need. So, you know, for us, where are we now? We are coming out of this incredible two years of growth, looking ahead to an equally incredible two years of growth. And in order to do that, because none of our services do we charge for, it's all, no, you know, no matter what your economic background is, no matter what your current circumstances are, um, everything is free of charge. So we have to have the funds to do that. So the purpose is to raise the funds in a joyful setting so that we can continue to grow. And how can people get tickets? Well, <laughs> I believe we can go on the Parks City Music Hall website. Um, but also, um, we are Wolfgang, and it's W-O-O-F, wolfgangco.org. Um, is our website and uh, and then there's links like through our Instagram account um, Wolfgang Co and uh, uh, Wolfgang and Co is our Facebook so you can you can find us all over the place. Well, I think it came across very well on air the the kind of passion and integrity that you have and I can just tell you um, this you're listening to a very good steward and implementer of any donation money that would go to Wolfgang and Company, um, we stand 100% behind them at uh, Band Central, as I as I know uh, John does. Um, and, you know, the event's going to be really fun. John and I were joking yesterday about both being the anti-gala guys, <laughs> you know, where we, we like to create an event where you don't wear your no. Doc Siders <laughs> and Chinos and and you know, and have your paddle that you're raising. You go and just have a, a ton of fun at a live music venue, and also accomplish the same goals. So, thank you very much, Amy. Sure. Um, and we'll be hearing more from you. So, joining us now, right now, uh, is a friend of mine who just flew in from Nolens, mm -hmm. and um, it's Ben Jaffe. And Ben is the uh, creative director of Preservation Hall. He plays tuba plays double bass with the Preservation Hall Jazz Band. And he's also, you know, he's the son of Preservation Hall's former managers, Alan Jaffa, Jaffe and Sandra Jaffe. He grew up in New Orleans, right in the French Quarter, two blocks from Preservation Hall. He attended Oberlin College, where he received a degree in bass performance. And he is fresh off some exciting performances at New Orleans Jazz Fest. I had the joy of attending. And he's now gearing up, flying in today, um, to present New Orleans music at this year's Greenwich Town Party later this week on Saturday the 27th in Greenwich. And I think you're going to be there, John. I'm going to be there, so it's going to be uh, great. So welcome, Ben. Oh, thank you, Rob. It is a treat to be here. I actually um, flew in from Nashville. Mm -hmm. We had a show there last night. <laughs> So <laughs> it's a blur. It might have as well have been New Orleans, right? Because we, we played there Saturday night. And, uh, okay. and here we are. Fantastic. Hey, tell, tell, people, tell people about our friendship and how it is that you're actually here today sitting in <laughs> WPKO studio in Bridgeport. Uh, I, well, I guess it's through Greenwich Town Party. And actually, I guess it may even uh, before even we started – our relationship with a uh, Greenwich Town Party, we uh, believe we may have met in New Orleans at Preservation Hall at one of our galas, uh, Midnight Preserves, during Jazz Fest. I think that predated uh, us actually playing at Greenwich Town Party. Right, right. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, I think it's really through Ray Dalio and our, our friendship yes. with Ray yes. that we came into the same circle. And uh, it was sort of funny because. Ben knew that I worked at Bridgewater Associates and the very unique culture there. And one of his first questions was me was, could you help me bring some of that hedge fund stuff to the culture <laughs> <laughs> at Preservation Hall? And he and I have made, uh, uh, we've made a meal of that, haven't we? We've been working on that. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, my parents, uh, I mean, my dad was a tuba player from and graduated from Wharton and ended up in New Orleans with my mom in 61. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of, of Preservation Hall as we know it today. So my father had a background in business, but, you know, was really, um, you know, very involved with the arts and the social justice issues and the civil rights movement. So I've always bounced back and forth between those two worlds in my brain, between music and the arts and business. Uh, but Preservation Hall is, I guess, a lot like this radio station is very grassroots. And uh, 
just became what it became over over time. Mm. And uh, when I when I we met, and you know, and I, and you know, as I became more familiar with you know R Ray's uh, principles and the sort of philosophy, you know, of of, of your business, you know, the different businesses that 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 uh, you've been involved in, I it just seemed to me that like, oh wow, these are a lot of things that we actually do already or apply but we've never really given a, a a word to or been able to articulate so it's been really a beautiful relationship you know getting to know you and you know the work you've done with us and and my group and my organization as we grow and become uh, I, I, was and just, I was just i was just telling john and amy that I was excited to have you here because I consider you one of my mentors. And then I listened to you introduce me to people and you say, this is one of my mentors. So we, we, we kind of have this thing. And um, you're sitting right next to a guy who's got a very similar temperament and vibe to you. He, he's a true artist yes. who also owns, I'm talking about John Torres, <laughs> who owns a, a venue. You own a couple venues yes. in New Orleans. So you guys have a lot in common. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a question. You know, I, you just returned, during Jazz Fest, you actually had an opportunity to perform with Robert Plant. Yes. In a very intimate setting from, from Led Zeppelin. Um, I watched you perform with Poe Larkin, some, you know, the people that come in to the hall to informally perform with Preservation Hall Jazz Band. It is just amazing to, to, to feel and see. Um, the question I want to ask you that I asked John is what inspires you most making music with other people? Mm. Uh, right now. Right now, today. In, in your life in now, life. is it a certain type yes. of music? It, is it... Is it a certain oh, type of no. energy exchange. What what's going on with it's what beyond, is inspiring you now? Yeah, it's beyond uh, genre. Uh, it, that I, I don't I don't see music that way. I, I I just see it as you know sounds and you know these you know uh, the people and I see people cut from the same cloth from different walks of life from different uh, different parts of the country, different parts of the world, and. Uh, I've been very blessed that I've gotten to travel the world first with my father when I was a child and and then as an adult for the past 30 years for you know six months out of the road I've spent on the road tra traveling the world and meeting musicians and, and meeting people and there's this universal uh, language that musicians speak and musicians I, th I think know this um, but it, it, it's always interesting when you introduce this uh this idea to people, you know, they they like, well, wh I don't understand. What is the connection between Led Zeppelin and Preservation Hall? There's no connection. What are you talking about? These guys are like rock and rollers, and they're from England. And you're like, oh no, actually, you know, Robert Plant's first record was, you know, a record that our trumpet player's grandfather played on. And uh, in fact, we're gonna go ahead and play that song for you tonight. You know, <laughs> and you know, probably there wouldn't have been. Um, you know the Led Zeppelin that we know today, without American blues and without American rock and roll, and without you know a lot of the music that came from New Orleans or was inspired by New Orleans, uh, you know, but you know country blues and acoustic blues and um, uh, gospel and spiritual music and, and mm. early New Orleans jazz and you know Louis Jordan. I mean, you know, Fats Domino. I mean, any of these. I mean, I listen. To, you know, people. I mean, when I heard the the Clash for the first time, I immediately I, I felt connected to them. But to me, they they felt they didn't sound like, but they felt like a, a band from New Orleans. And I think that that's what Preservation Hall. Mm. To me, that's like the exciting thing about what we do is not just carrying forward and um, continuing being part of a tradition, you know, the New or uh, New Orleans history, but also finding those places where it where it's connected either connected to new orleans or new orleans is connected to it and you know actually creating something that people can experience and you've been there you've been there on many special nights where we've um had you know artists uh you know come join us people that i i've been inspired by you know whether it's irma thomas or you know robert plant or you know gosh it's you know i've an important thing well when we start to hear that music 
That means that we're doing our closing segment, and we just have a moment left. Amy, what was your favorite part of the show today? Um, I think meeting new people and hearing, <laughs> hearing you know, John and I have met, but just hearing a little more about the story and the mission, and it's great. It's wonderful. Great. And John? Um, that was really great. Your, your last comments there were just really spot on, and it was really inspiring to hear you speak about it. <coughs> And of course, Amy and what she's doing, and I, you know, I have a history with adults with disabilities, so I love what you guys do. It's really heartwarming to me that you guys are there in BlackRock. Great, great. And Ben, I know you, you kind of sort of came in the middle here because of a late flight, but we, we warmly rec welcome you to Bridgeport. Um, we know you've actually done some benefit, th you know, things in the Bridgeport schools. Uh, anything you take away from today's show? Well, you know, and being here in this environment with with you in the station it's it just reminds me there there's places like this all over the country all over the world mm -hmm. and it's just beautiful to connect you know to come up and you know not feel far from home but to be you know someplace that, that actually feels very familiar to me oh. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> You know, somehow, you know, somehow you feel familiar <laughs> wherever you go. I don't, you know, it, it's you, you true. Got, you got that fuzzy well, you've uh, got a great Winnie the Pooh thing going on. <laughs> um, hey, I want to thank our guests, Amy Turner, John Torres, and Ben Jaffe, uh, Steve DiCostanza. I also want to thank Audrey Neforis, Paula Murphy, and Andy Cadison from my team. Our next show is Monday, June 26th. Stand by for Rick Patrone, who's going to play some dynamite jazz coming up. Take good care. Band Central signing off.